Hi guys, in my last video, we briefly touched on the surface of Tor and the dark web. Some of you guys told me that you want to know more about it. So here it is. If you haven't watched that previous one, I highly suggest you do, so you can better understand the basics of what I'm talking about in this one. Link will be in the description. So let's get on with today's video. The internet isn't something that was invented. It does not have a founder, it simply developed over time. The question of anonymity is not something that was thought about in the early days of the web. Today, that's a whole other story. Which brings us in to today's subject, the history of Tor, the Onion Router. The US military have used a network of spies around the globe to collect information in the 1990s. This information got more and more digital, and slowly but surely, the agencies would realize that it would be so much more effective for them if they could communicate online. Not having to deal with deciphering messages anymore and large equipment being carried around just of the simple act to communicate. The problem was that the way the internet worked at the time would seriously threat the confidentiality and also the security of this secret information. They needed a way to become anonymous. So in the mid-1990s, the NRL, short for the United States Naval Research Laboratory, began to look for ways to solve this problem. What they found was a way to route encrypted data through different computers spread all over the globe, which would hide all data from where it began to its destination, essentially making it nearly 100% anonymous. In 2002, the software became freely accessible to the public. You are probably asking yourself, why would the US government release some secret software that could make anyone untraceable online to the public? That's a good question. Well, the co-creator of the Tor project, Roger Dingledine, explained it very well. He said this in 2004. The United States can't simply run an anonymity system for everybody and then use it themselves only. Because then every time a connection came from it, people would say, oh, it's another CIA agent looking at my website, if those are the only people using the network. So you need to have other people using the network so that they blend together. To answer your question, they kinda had to. Now you understand that Tor is software that will encrypt all data from the beginning of the connection to the end of the connection and it will send the data across a network of computers around the globe, making the person using it untraceable. Great, let's move on. As explained in my previous video, there are two sides of the web. The first one being the surface web, which is the web that you use in your everyday life, and is indexed by normal search engines. However, the other side of the web, called the deep web, consists of everything that is not indexed by normal search engines. The dark web is a part of the deep web, where illegal activities take place. We are gonna get deeper into exactly what kind of illegal activities, but I will have to say this first. Some of the following information is by its very nature impossible to verify. Some of this is 100% true, and some of it is rumors and legends. However, the web is so big that all of it could very well exist inside of it. A quick warning, some of what will be talked about in the rest of the video is not for everyone. If you're up for it, stick around. Otherwise, I suggest you put on a happy song and get far away from the next segment. Let's get moving. The Silk Road was kind of like the eBay of the deep web. You could buy basically anything on there. Everything from any drug you can imagine, or can't even imagine, to illegal weapons, stolen credit cards and whole identities. For you to understand how big this site actually was, it had generated a staggering sum of 1.2 billion dollars from the start in 2011 to it being shut down by the FBI in 2013. 
Activity in the Tor network rose with around 600% after being mentioned in the mainstream media and just a few months after the site being shut down, ex-admins opened up Silk Road 2.0, which got shut down in the end of 2013 by the FBI again. And only a few hours this time after that, Silk Road 3.0 was released. Keep in mind that Silk Road was only one marketplace for these types of things. Who knows how many more was and still is out there today. This one was legit. There is an urban legend that has never been confirmed and for good reason. What I'm talking about is called Red Rooms. A Red Room would be a live stream of a person being tortured for the viewers and entertainment. In these rooms you could allegedly pay to make the choice of how the victim is going to be tortured and also chat and interact with the streamers as well as the other users. The next one I really had to think long and hard before including and which is the biggest reason for me being hesitant on making this video at all. Because child pornography is unfortunately a huge problem in the dark web with one of probably the biggest sites on the dark web regarding this subject having over 200,000 members that has thankfully been taken down. The problem that persists with anything that is taken down on the dark web is that a number of sites is ready to go as soon as the previous one gets taken down, as explained by the Silk Road being up and up and up again. Another urban legend that to my knowledge has never been confirmed to actually be true is that there are hitmen for hire. Some sites even have a list of prices, and the prices vary depending on who that person is. From a celebrity, to politicians, to your next door neighbor. Kinda like a menu you would get at your restaurant of choice. What I would like to end on is this. That anything that is said about the content of the dark web may or may not be true. Always take it with a grain of salt. Important to know is that if you're for some reason even after this video would like to check it out, it's not as easy as getting tour and just surfing it. You need several things and you also need a lot more knowledge about how it works and even then it's not safe to do so. So don't even try, nothing positive will come from it. Make sure to subscribe so I can continue sharing what I love with you. Tell me in the comment section below what you would like to know more about next time. Thanks for watching and see you soon.